Hello, I'm Nicholas Donahue from North Carolina. And I'm Austin Kahn from New York. And for the past few months, we've been in San Francisco building a standalone VR headset. The biggest problem in the VR space is companies restricting developers. For example, the only existing standalone headset, the Oculus Quest, denies nearly all games submitted to its platform and doesn't allow headset modifications. For widespread adoption, indie developers need an open ecosystem that allows them to freely create and share their content. With our open source VR headset, developers are able to push content and hack away on both the hardware and the software. We've selected a handful of developers from our community to purchase our beta kit, which consists of the headset components and files, allowing them to 3D print and build their own headset. This will allow us to work with early users and make hardware and software improvements before a wider launch. Our headset is one of the first headsets to integrate with the new OpenXR standard, allowing developers to create and access applications on any platform. Over the past few months, we have developed a few prototypes, grown our community to around 1,000 makers and developers, received investment, and grown our team. Over the next few months, we plan to refine our hardware, continue to build out our platform, and launch a Kickstarter. We are currently looking for an embedded systems engineer to help with hardware development and a graphics designer to help with UI and branding. If you are interested or know anyone who is, feel free to reach out to us at atmos.world slash careers. Thank you. All right, um, super cool. Um, I suppose the first question I have is, um, I, uh, what, what existing hardware project is this sort of most like? Um, uh, is this sort of like Raspberry Pi for VR? Uh, should I think of it as something else? Um, yeah. Uh, we see it as like the equivalent of building a custom PC, but for VR. Mm -hmm. So, okay. I mean, it's both similar to that and also the, the same types of people that would be interested. Got it. Okay. So you think this is a business, uh, albeit a niche one, and potentially for sort of higher end users, like the kind of people that you assemble up a PC? Yep. Yep. Got it. Um, from business model standpoint, uh, if you're open, um, is there anything that you can do or sort of market segments you can address that are maybe more difficult for Oculus or for the other closed systems in the sense that, you know, if you think about obviously Linux in, you know, on the desktop, Linux is kind of just a worse, you know, Windows or OS 10 or whatever, but obviously on servers, because kind of the, the constraints are different, obviously it's been super successful. And so, you know, is there, is there, are there, are there niches or market segments like that where you'll actually be much better off? Yeah. I mean, our, 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 our main concern is actually getting past the hardware and more into the platform side and seeing how that we can uh, make money off of like services that can build around like developer tools and like analytics around like the applications that people are creating more so than necessarily the hardware specifically. The hardware is just kind of our entryway into that. Right. Obviously for PCs, you can, um, you know, you can build a better PC uh, than you can buy because you can assemble all the components, whatever, and miniaturization and everything else is sort of not that important. Um, but there's no way that really anyone sort of sub Apple scale, uh, or I guess, uh, unless they're at least a material fraction, can produce a phone as good as the iPhone just because there's so much proprietary componentry, the um, assembly is so complex that, that you know, again, since everything is so you know, space constrained and so on. And so, um, you know, do you think that VR headsets will be like PCs or like phones? Because that sort of seem to have pretty big implications as to whether you can successfully address the high end. Uh, they'll definitely be more like phones as we move forward, but the state we're at today in the industry is definitely more towards the PC and custom PC um, building time. Does that, where... does that mean life will kind of get harder for you guys, um, such as maybe you can't procure the right components, you can't manufacture the right custom things or whatever. But we know that's coming, so we'll just... Got it. And so is the idea basically that kind of by the time that happens, that you'll be at sufficient scale that, you know, you can have your own custom factories and fabs and everything else? Yep. yep. Kind of the current benefit right now is that there's a ton of different component manufacturers for each given component, whether that's the tracking board or the SVC in the back or the screens. And so we're able to just kind of bandwagon all the other industries that have been like, whether it's robotics or like smartphones, the different things that have uh, led to these, the creation of these different components at this time. Obviously there's kind of an open question as to what, um, uh, you know, what the predominant um, uh, use cases for, for VR will be. 
Uh, do you guys have any sort of thesis on that? Like, you know, sh should one think of this as primarily for gaming, um, for, for development and experimentation, for something else? Yeah, so uh, our kind of goal, the way we see it is that VR and AR are going to kind of merge uh, soon. And uh, our, our kind of focus will then shift into more of the AR realm where we think that uh, headsets will act more like uh, real world browsers where like typically you have like a, a site like facebook.com that you go to that presents uh, an experience that Facebook has created for you with your own personal layer kind of added into that. And we think that that will happen in the physical world where basically physical locations will be like a matrix of uh, different uh, uh, like location points. And uh, with that, each person who owns like, let's say this house uh, will create an experience for anyone who comes within that space and your headset will act like a three dimensional browser. And that's kind of the future we see. Got it. So sort of um, if the unicorn Frappuccino is uh, sort of um, this kind of, uh, you know, made for Instagram, made for the digital world, uh, sort of physical object, you're saying that will happen much more pervasively. Mm -hmm. Will, 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 will that support any, I mean, if that happens, is the idea that that will support sort of any VR experience or it'll be built kind of the, the physical world will, you know, be mutated and modify itself to support your headset or? Well, that's the benefit of building on the web is that all you need is a browser to access it. So you can even yeah, access it. There will be an, kind of an open physical substrate that, uh, and platform, I guess, that, you know, you'll be one of the clients of. Got it. Um, okay, and then audience question. Um, uh, you know, if we look back in ten years and VR is indeed a huge market, uh, what will have been the sort of catalyst and you know, the the proverbial Netscape moment? Um, I think there are a lot of little applications that um, I, I think a lot of things will end up replacing current hardware. For instance, like virtualizing your workspace is a big thing. I think a lot of people think about um, and and. I think when you start to move into the realm of like not having to buy screens and buy like TVs and like physical devices anymore that are, are what you interact with, but rather they're all virtualized, um, you, you get rid of a lot of other markets and then that grows like VR in general. How far away do you think it is, um, this idea of no longer having, you know, an LCD display in front of me, but instead when I go to work uh, that I'm putting on a VR headset? Um, I, I, it's not that far away. The only uh, limiting factor is your like pix pixel density because um, right. you have to be able to virtualize a, a, a mini screen at the same quality and so you have to have super high resolution of your own screen and that's pretty much the only limitation. It's like it's five years, seven years? What? You think it's like three, five, seven years? Uh, I think it's within a year. Really? Yeah. I mean, shouldn't that be the Netscape moment? Yeah. I mean, you know, 70 inch, you know, um, uh, workspaces for everyone. <laughs> hmm, interesting. Um, okay, awesome. Well, uh, this is uh, super cool. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.